So generally, uh, we have a satisfying result so far. So the, the overall uh, logic of the program seems to be okay. Uh, but one thing I would like to add here is that uh, perhaps I need an extra space right here when I make a prompt for the user input. And also, uh, I would like to validate the result. So let's say system.out print line okay and we will print something like this stir result and uh, I will use uh, square brackets to indicate uh, what the actual input was now this uh, uh, overall uh, seems uh, more or less okay let's run this one more time just to test it one two three four five and uh, here is the prompt with square brackets uh, echoing back and indicating that uh, it seems to be working as expected one thing I would like to add uh, to get string a method itself uh, is that I can say that uh, if uh, result equals empty line Maybe what I can do um, is to print uh, a message that says uh, input cannot be empty. So this is just to clarify to the user. I may ask, um, I may uh, use some indentation with the tab, and maybe print like uh, some some asterisk uh, around this message to highlight uh, the fact that uh, we're expecting uh, some sort of input. This is an example of validation. And uh, uh, right now, because our design of getString is such that we want to make sure that M the, enter, uh, the input is not empty, it's probably OK to uh, use this uh, statement and let's say print line so that we just print uh, the separate line like this let's do a quick test on this and again I'm just going to hit enter and there we go so it says input cannot be empty so this is nice because now I quickly recognize the fact that uh, I was expecting to um, provide some input again I'll just say quit okay and uh, then it works A few things that I do not like about uh, this uh, program organization is that, of course, it's a very small um, uh, demo program. So it's OK as, as, as long as it fits on, on one screen. But generally speaking, uh, because this is now quite a generic method, I would like to uh, sort of build a library of methods like this. So I can possibly get integer values from the user, uh, double values from the user, uh, maybe some other types of, um, uh, of input in the future. So essentially, I'd like to build uh, some sort of a platform, uh, essentially utility, set of utility methods that allow me to deal with user input so that methods like main uh, are excused from these low-level uh, facilities where we need to know exactly what methods to call with respect to the scanner. It basically, at the main level, we just want to say get string or get integer or get double, uh, provide some kind of prompt and get the result quickly. So this is one concern that I have is that I would like this code to be moved out of this class. I'd like to have it in a separate file. So this is uh, my first concern. My second concern is that Every time we call string, we could be calling it thousands of times if this program executes a lot of uh, uh, cycles of user input, user interaction. We can be calling this method many, many times. Is there really a need to create new scanner with each invocation of this method? Probably not. So therefore, this, uh, this is another concern 
um, uh, that I have is that perhaps we should be should be reusing this scanner object, create it only once and continue reusing it as opposed to creating new every time we call this method. So that's my second consideration. So this, uh, let's address both of these things. So this is our method name get string. Okay. And uh, uh, what I would like to do is I'd like to go to the source packages. Uh, week 7 is a source package that uh, the project wizard created for me because that was the name of the program. I'm going to right click on the, uh, on the name of this package and say create new Java class. So when you say create new Java class, it simply adds new class. And uh, all we have to do at this stage uh, when we say new Java class, uh, we we'll just specify the class name. I will call it validator. Okay, we could call it uh, input validator, but let's just call it validator, meaning that it's going to um, uh, deal with user input and also provide means for some very basic uh, validation, the type of validation. So this is all we need to do in this dialog box. So we just say finish. And as soon as we do something like this, you see that the validator class, um, uh, actually Java file with the same name as our public class validator uh, gets added. So for now, I'll just remove these uh, these comments from from here. Uh, and the next thing I'd like to do is to move it uh, to new document tab group so we can work in parallel uh, in these two files. So this is our project structure right here. This is our main app. So let's uh, move this uh, method. Uh, recall that it remains static because the main has to be static. So at this stage, we're not creating our own objects. Um, uh, right now, we're just dealing with uh, uh, places where we'd like to be able to write some code. So from here, I'd like to cut this Okay, remove it from here and place it inside class name validator. Now this uh, smart wizard already detects that we want to be able to import something. So I'll say, okay, let's import. So it automatically part of my copy and paste operation added the import statement. Okay, that's nice. I also would like to note that since uh, the scanner is not no longer used in this file let's just remove this import we don't need this import of the scanner anymore and uh, get string now was placed inside class name validator and uh, the static method inside a class can be invoked by using the name of the class in front of the method just like this okay so validator get string so it was very nice that we were able to relocate the code into a separate class, which is where, which is basically the direction in which we'd like to move, uh, handle a user input here. And sometimes I get uh, a little bit confused about all the closing braces. So my habit is to add uh, the comment with the class name at the end of the closing brace as well. So here I can recognize that this is the beginning of my method, this is the ending of my method, and this is the, the name of my class, and this is the closing brace that handles uh, the class uh, uh, definition like this. So the next thing uh, that we'd like to address here is this issue with the scanner object that would like to avoid creation of the new scanner object every time we invoke this method.